In this lecture, I want to look in more detail at archiving Microsoft Exchange using Enterprise Vault. And what I want to start with is looking at the architecture of Microsoft Exchange archiving. So on the Enterprise Vault server, we have uh, an archiving task. And the archiving task will connect to a Microsoft Exchange server. And what it will find is mailboxes to archive, mailboxes that have been enabled for archiving. It will archive those according to a mailbox policy, which we'll talk about a bit more in a minute. Once it's identified items to archive, those will be archived using the storage service on the Enterprise Vault server. And items will be placed into storage and entries will be put into the Vault Store database and the fingerprint database on the Microsoft SQL server. So we've talked about policies already, but what are they? Well, we've got a mailbox policy. The mailbox policy determines something called the archiving strategy. There are two archiving strategies. There is age-based archiving, which is probably easier to understand. With an age-based strategy, items will be archived after a period of time, for instance, three months, six months. Or you can have quota-based archiving, which means that when users get above a certain percentage of their quota, archiving will kick in till they get below that percentage. The mailbox policy also determines what should be archived. So, for instance, whether we're just archiving emails, calendar items, tasks, unread items. It also determines the age of items to be archived and what shortcut we're going to create and the content of the shortcut. There's also a desktop policy which determines what to be displayed in supported clients, so the icons to display, vault cache and virtual vault settings. So vault cache is basically an offline archive and virtual vault is like a PST-like interface that we can display within Outlook. Also in the desktop policy, there are lots of advanced settings for the different types of clients that are supported. We have to set up three different targets when we set up Enterprise Vault. The first one is domains. So we need to add to the administration console the Active Directory domains that host Exchange servers. We also need to add all the Exchange servers that are going to host target mailboxes. And we need to create at least one provisioning group. The provisioning group specify target mailboxes that are going to be provisioned and it assigns the policies to the users and it assigns a retention category as well. We also need to enable users for archiving, and there are a couple of ways of doing that. We can run an enable mailbox wizard and do it manually, or probably better is to provision automatically. So when a user falls under the scope of a provisioning group, the next time the archiving task runs, they will be provisioned. That's probably the best way of doing it. What happens when a user is, is enabled is that it creates an archive within a, a vault store, it adds hidden messages to the user's mailbox. The reason for this is to add those archiving settings into the mailbox, which can be picked up by Outlook so that it knows which icons to display within Outlook. It also sends a welcome message to the user. This is important to tell users that they have now been enabled for Enterprise Vault and explain to them how it's actually going to work. So let's now think about archiving tasks. First, we have the mailbox archiving task, which obviously archives exchange mailboxes. This typically runs on a schedule, usually runs in the evening. So maybe run for a four hour schedule. It connects to five mailboxes at a time by default, and it archives according to those mailbox policies, which, which we just described. We also have something called a journal archiving task. Now this runs continuously, it runs 24 seven. It connects to journal mailboxes on the Exchange server and it archives everything. And the purpose of this, if you've got journaling configured on your Exchange servers, this will take all the emails out of those journal mailboxes and archive them. So what happens after archiving? Well, we need to back up Enterprise Vault storage first. Once we've backed it up, we can delete the original item and then we can create the shortcut. I'm now going to do a quick demonstration of Microsoft Exchange archiving. So in this demonstration, we're going to look at Exchange mailbox archiving. 
So I'm on the Enterprise Vault server and I've got the admin console open already. So there are a number of things I want to show you. So the first thing is under targets and under exchange, we need to set up the domains, the Active Directory domains that exchange servers are a member of. And then underneath that, we need to add in all the different exchange servers. So I've got one exchange server in my environment, server one. And we also need to configure at least one provisioning group. So if we look at this priority users provisioning group, you'll notice that it's assigning different policies, so the desktop policy, the mailbox policy, and the PSD migration policy. It's also setting up archiving defaults, so it's automatically enabling mailboxes, and you can see the target. So any users in the department head group are going to be added to this provisioning group and going to be provisioned. So if I right click on exchange, I can display policies to mailboxes. So if I do that, I want to show you that the user that I'm going to be archiving from, Darren Geyer, has the priority users provisioning group, which and the priority users desktop policy and exchange mailbox policy. So let's now look at the policies. So they're under policies here under exchange. So there's the priority users mailbox policy. This determines things like the archiving rules. So we're using an age based strategy here. We can also use quota based. Uh, we're going to archive items that are older than three months. And we do have an override for large items. So it says it's going to start with large items. Um, and it's going to do those which are more than one megabyte. And it's going to do them when they're zero days old. I can also specify things like the archiving action. So it's going to create uh, a shortcut and it's going to delete the original item and it's going to archive unread items. You can also con control the content of the shortcut. So it's going to create a customized body with 100 characters and it's going to include links to the attachments and a banner. So that is the mailbox policy that's been assigned to our user. What I want to show you now is the archiving task. So that's under Enterprise Vault Servers. Here down here, Tasks. And there's our mailbox archiving task for Server 1. So if you look at the properties of that, Normally, the archiving task will run on a schedule, but I've currently set it to not run the schedule because I don't want it archiving all the uh, emails, so it's set to never. But normally, obviously, be at the selected times, and you specify the window when you went archiving to happen. So I'm now going to run the archiving task. And I'm going to run it as an archiving and I'm just going to select mailboxes and archive all items. So there's our user Darren Gaya. And it started running. Obviously, it's going to take a, a couple of minutes to finish processing. So if we now look at the properties again. There is a reporting tab, and this will tell me that it was an archiving run now, and it said it's archived uh, two items. So if we go into here and view reports, just expand this. If I view the latest run, see it was doing Darren Gaia and it's done two items sorry that two items have been archived it also says there are two items future eligible items so if I go and get more detail
you'll notice the reason why those two items haven't been archived yet is that they're they're too young so it's archived the two large items because they were over uh, one megabyte but it hasn't archived the other ones because it's going to wait until they're three months old. So that brings to the end of this demonstration of Exchange Mailbox Archiving.